So now we will proceed for the procedures. To test for the solubility of the fats, we will need to prepare all of our equipment. So for this, we'll be needing to have a three test tubes, which contains a water, an acetone, and a water with a pinch of soap. So after that, we will be needed to place or put in five drops or an adequate amount of our lipids onto the test tubes, and then we'll, we will then stir or then um, shake each test tube to see if there are any emulsification occurred. So after that, um, we will observe. Now for the procedure, we will be needing to test for the solubility of the fats. Now to do this, we will be needing to um, repeat all of the process for each uh, oil. So, we will be needing to have a three test tubes which contain a water, an acetone, a water with a pinch of soap. So after that, we will be needing to add each uh, five drops of oil or a small amount of the lipids to put under the three test tube and then we will shake it well. And after that, we will need to observe whether the solution has any occurrence of emulsification. After that, we will record all of the data that we have gathered. Okay, now to start uh, for our canola oil, I'm going to put on the water acetone and on the water with a pinch of soap. And then we will just shake it. As you can see, there are little bubbles. Now for the cooking oil. again so now for the butter So we will now shake it. So now for the margarine.
just shake it. Now to test for uh, our palm oil. Now we'll shake it. Now for our pork oil. Now for the sesame oil. Pour the vegetable oil. Now to test for our olive oil. Now lastly for the lard
Now, to test for the degree of saturation of fatty acids, we will need to put a 5 ml of our liquid lipids onto our separate test tubes and as well as a control tube with a 5 ml of water. Next is that um, we are going to add, slowly add um, the halogen water dropwise and then we will shake each tube every each addition. The halogen solution should be added just until it fails to be decolorized. And then after that, we will record the number of drops needed to bring about the full decolorization of each lipids. So for this, we have our canola oil, the pork oil, our palm oil, olive oil, and as well as our vegetable oil. So now, we are going to start. Now to start, So as we can see, our canola oil has reached its um, decolorization. Now for our pork oil, we have stopped from 2. Okay, so for our pork oil, it has reached its decolorization for after 6 drops. On to our palm oil. We have already stopped for two. After eight drops, our palm oil has reached its decolorization. And to our vegetable oil, we have already stopped for two. So I think we have already also reached its decolorization at after eight months. Next, for our olive oil, we have already stuck for two. already gone. So after 10 drops, our olive oil has reached its decolorization. Now for the next 5 batch, now to test for the degree of saturation for the other 5 lipids, we have here the coconut oil, margarine, our butter, the lard, and as well as our sesame oil. So for our lard, it has already hardened so we will try if we can uh, decolorize it. So now I'm just going to add first on the sesame oil. So um, I 
think we have already reached for the number of drops needed to decolorize the sesame oil. So now we'll proceed to the butter. Our butter has already decolorized after two or three drops. Now for the margarine. So it has all already um, solidified. So um, we will now um, just move on first to the uh, cooking oil. One. So now to continue, since we have stopped at the first drop on the cooking oil, we'll now add. The coconut oil has reached its decolorization after two or three drops. Now for the margarine and the lard, since um, this is um, had already solidified, we will try now to um, use a stick to stir it. So I'm just going to drop. We have already dropped the first one. The decolorization of the margarine has reached um, and after the third and or the second drop of the iodine solution. Now for the lard, For the lard, its decolorization has reached after the first or either the first or the second drop. So um, that is all for the test of the degree of saturation. The data obtained from the experiment of the properties of lipids. A. The solubility of lipids. The sample lipids are first is the canola oil is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. Second, coconut oil is also insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. Third, butter is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. Fourth, margarine is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. And the fifth, palm oil is insoluble in water but also soluble in acetone and soap. Six, pork oil is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. Seven, sesame oil is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. Eight, vegetable oil is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. 9. Olive oil is insoluble in water but soluble in acetone and soap. And last but not the least is the lard is also insoluble in water, however soluble in acetone and soap. Next that we're going to tackle is the letter B, the test for the degree of saturation. So we have here different sample lipids. Number 1 is the canola oil. Number 2 is the coconut oil. Number 3 is the butter. Number four is the margarine, and lastly, number five is the palm oil. So we also have different number of drops. So in the canola oil, we have 15. In the coconut oil, we have two. In the butter and margarine, we, all, we have both three. And in the palm oil, we have eight. 
and the colors after adding iodine in the canola oil it is reddish brown in the coconut oil it is rust red in the butter and the margarine they have both light red meanwhile in the palm oil it is dark red so in order to determine if it is saturated or saturated in the canola oil it is unsaturated in the coconut oil it is saturated in the butter it is also saturated and in the margarine it is unsaturated meanwhile in the palm oil it is saturated so for the letter b test for the degree of saturation the sample lipids are the pork oil sesame oil vegetable oil olive oil and lard so for the number of drops on the pork oil it has six on the sesame oil it has seven on the vegetable oil it has eight on the olive oil it has 10 and for the lard it has two and the colors after adding the i2 on the pork oil it was dark red and the sesame oil same with vegetable oil and olive oil they were brown and for the lard it was reddish brown and for the pork oil it is saturated and also sesame oil vegetable oil olive oil they are unsaturated and for the lard it is saturated Question number one. Note the different fats tested for unsaturation. Please them from the most unsaturated to the least unsaturated. From the most unsaturated to the least unsaturated, the first one is the canola, second olive, third vegetable, fourth sesame, fifth palm, sixth lard, seventh pork oil, eighth margarine, ninth butter and for the least unsaturated is the coconut so for question number two from your observations which is the better emulsifying agent soap or detergent an emulsification agent or also called as emulsifiers are substances that is capable of dispersing one liquid into another immiscible liquid in the experiment the detergent is the best emulsifier for oils in water because these have molecules that consist of a water-soluble head and oil-soluble tail. On the other hand, soaps are made from natural ingredients already such as plant oils but still has the ability to act as an emulsifier. Therefore, we can conclude that detergent is more effective agent than soaps. Upon conducting the experiment, we have learned that lipids are a group of organic compounds and some properties of it shows wherein lipids are insoluble in water and when put into solvent, it becomes soluble. We have also learned that lipids mostly occurs in plants and animals. In addition, solid triglycerols fat, have high proportions of saturated fatty acids compared to the liquids oil that have a high proportion of unsaturated fatty acids. Lastly, with the halogenation, the unsaturated fatty acids reacts to halogen resulting into the decolorization of its halogen solution.